finals between Wolf Glick and David Carrere. We can already get a chance to see what David is going to kick things off with. It is that Venusaur and that Torkoal. And for Wolf, we're going to start out with the Galarian Moltres and the Incineroar. Now, the Galarian Moltres is a Pokemon that Wolf has been able to use to great success. And even just the matches that we saw previously, such as the Losers Finals, where... We had to see that Galarian Moltres really take advantage of that Berserk boost as well as just being able to dish out big damage. Yeah, the Galarian Moltres does become kind of a focal point of the team, I think, when it's when it's bought and definitely bought in the lead. It's really going to be the core element to, to try and power through and, and get all the damage it can down onto David's side of the field. But Torkoal Venusaur can definitely cause some problems. Uh, you've immediately got the Drought ability set up. Uh, you've immediately got the ability to then use Chlorophyll. And as we've seen in a, in a couple of the matches already today, Venusaur with Chlorophyll can just completely slow the game down by hitting those Sleep Powders before things are given a chance to move. And, and what can easily become a problem is if something Dynamaxes and then gets caught by a Sleep Powder, it's not going to be a concern immediately but it is something to consider for when this Dynamax expires. Well, the other thing about this too is that Venusaur has the ability to just go for the Gigantamax right away, which is exactly what it's going to do. Going for a Max Quake right into Wolf's Incineroar, which is going to take that pretty handedly, which is very nice for Wolf to be able to have that Incineroar stick on the field. But what's really important about the Max Quake coming out from the Venusaur on David's side is the fact that it is boosting that special defense, which is going to be very important versus the Scalarian Moltres. We've seen this already in games today that boosting your special defense does limit what the Galarian Moltres can do. In response to that, I think Galarian Moltres has seen that maybe coming through and just trying to match up the stats a little bit by saying, you know what, I'm going to boost up my special attack with a nasty plot and I won't have to worry about your special defense boost. And a really nice taunt from Incineroar, establishing the amount of problems Torkoal has caused with sleep of its own through Yawn, making sure that Torkoal isn't given that option. So really nice play here from Wolf to try and set things up and get himself in a position to maybe go a little more on turn number two. It's possible in that game of Wolf Glick versus David Career in winner's round number two that that Torkoal was a problem. We already saw that David was able to use that Torkoal and that Yawn to really great fruition in that winner's finals. And it really doesn't surprise me that Wolf just says, no, you're not allowed to do that this game. It's not going to happen. But now after the nasty plot has come through on that Galarian Moltres, it's time to Dynamax. This gives Wolf a bit of an advantage when it comes down to how many turns of Dynamax are left versus the Gigantamax that David Career has on that Venusaur, but especially with that nasty plot boost, it really mitigates some of that special defense that David had got from that Max Quake. But speaking of which, another Max Quake now coming out from this Venusaur right into Incineroar, and that Barry is not around this time, and it wasn't enough to be able to save Incineroar from that critical hit that came through from the Max Quake. The critical hit, pretty huge there in making sure that it gets the requisite amount of damage to, to take the knockout. And Incineroar being felled, I, I don't know if it was going to be so valuable on this turn. But it does mean there's a second special defense boost. And the Urshifu is actually the one receiving the max airstream there. The speed boost could become very, very important, but it doesn't look uh, like the Venusaur is going to be getting in much trouble. Urshifu removed from the field about as soon as it came in. Uh, both trainers just taking a knockout in this turn. and doing their best to, to push on. Uh, I think this Venusaur is going to have to worry a little bit, particularly on that turn that we've got coming up where uh, it's going to be not Dynamaxed while the Moltres will. Absolutely. That's exactly what it means when you have that advantage from Dynamaxing a little bit later. Uh, but the other thing about this new switch in that's coming through is that Urshifu puts a little bit of pressure being that Rapid Strike variant onto the Torkoal. Yes, the sun is up, but you're still able to get those critical hits through. And that's going to be something I think really impactful to try to knock out this Torkoal before it gets a chance to yawn. The Torkoal can't be taunted now, which is nice, and it may draw a little bit of attention away. That attention could allow the Venusaur to make uh, a big, highly damaging play in its last turn of Dynamax. I think the Venusaur uh, getting a key move off here is very important, and GMAX Vinelash is certainly uh, one really good way to do it, bringing the Urshifu right down to its focus sash, and meaning at the end of the turn, Urshifu is done for. Yeah, you will have that residual damage coming through from the G-Max Vine Lash that occurred. But is this going to be uh, enough here? Well, the Max Airstream is going to be enough to knock out this Torkoal as the speed is going to rise for both the Urshifu as well as the Moltres. But how much damage is Urshifu really going to be able to do in this situation as we do see the Surging Strikes come through in the sun against a Venusaur? And it's really not going to do very much. So this Urshifu is going to go down with a lot of trouble.
Uh, barely even tickling that Venusaur, but I like what Wolf did there. I think double targeting the Torkoal, just making sure you get it knocked out. Of course, the Torkoal didn't have the benefit right there of being able to kind of take advantage of those special defense boosts, but there we see the G-Max Vinelash uh, get the knockout, just confirming that Urshifu won't be allowed to play anymore, and that's the end, don't forget, of Venusaur's uh, Gigantamax turns. Uh, that will be now staring down a Colossal. The Colossal doesn't have its normal partner to try and set up something, and the last Pokemon from David, the Weezing, with the neutralizing gas, this could get really interesting. I love this Pokemon. I love that people are finally starting to play around with it, and I'm looking forward to seeing if it becomes relevant in the last couple turns of these games. Oh, I remember when Neutralizing Gas was released and first announced at Worlds 2019, and I got so excited because I felt like that was just such a great way to really mitigate some of the effects coming through from those abilities. But you can see the forfeit coming through for game number one. Wolf Glick going to take that one before we even get a chance to see how that Weezing was going to work next to that Venusaur. Oh, yeah. I mean, that Weezing... Um really not in the premium position. I was curious to see uh, maybe if it could cause some problems by saying, you know what, uh, you don't get Berserk, but I think Wolf, after the nasty plot, was actually just so far ahead that he was able to, you know, just keep on going. And, and that last turn of Dynamax as well, with the Moltres being kind of a turn delayed in getting that started, uh, really, really good at, at just saying, you know what, as soon as your Venusaur's gone down, and that's what I think Wolf did throughout that game, was target the Venusaur partner for quite some time, yeah. and then just once Venusaur was, was done, even with the special defense boost, the lower health pool compared to Max Airstream's damage after the nasty plot was, was too much. So really, really smart play there um, by Wolf. I think the only thing that I really appreciated about uh, or one of the things that I really appreciated about that match is that Wolf did catch that Urshifu from David's team on the switch in with that Max Airstream and because it's holding a choice band and not the Focus Sash it wasn't able to stick around to be able to dish out the damage that David was really hoping that it would do. So now Wolf only needs one more win to get the bracket reset. So let's jump into game number two and find out whether we can get ourselves a second match set in this grand finals. Yeah, I mean, he's he's definitely learned his way around the matchup, at least taking one game. Uh, didn't even get that in winner's round two. So we'll be able to see exactly what the answer is and a change of lead as well from Wolf. Uh, even though he won the last match, says, no, I'm going to play this one a little differently. And I'll be curious to see how that shakes out as we get through the first part of the game. Well, it's a little bit different this time around. For David, we still see the same leads of Torkoal Venusaur, but for Wolf, this time it is that Dragapult and Incineroar, switching things up just in one of those Pokemon, where you can see that Dragapult is able to really help things out, but oh, the Sleep Powder, it misses! It misses the Incineroar. Sleep Powder does that, and that's why I think people have been bringing uh, Yawn as well. We saw it in, in an earlier game, just doubling in with that. Uh, the Sun, set up by the Torkoal here, means the Flevitz from Incineroar actually does huge damage, Ooh. brings it down and burns Burn. it! Oh my goodness. Wow, so Torkoal's gonna be able to get a Yawn off here, but this Venusaur is going down after it's gonna have that residual damage from the burn. So even though the Focus Sash allowed it to hold on, that Venusaur is out of here. That's a disastrous turn one for David. He's got no way to really try and, uh, you know, play around that Venus or didn't Dynamax it or, you know, just thought, well, I, I see this lead. I need to Sleep Powder. He's gone with the double sleep option with the Yawn and, and the Sleep Powder as well. But uh, yeah, the burn making sure that the Venusaur got knocked out there. Absolutely huge and a really big setback uh, for David Carrera in turn number one. I mean, Wolf coming out of the gate really, really strongly. He's set up a light screen as well, which is certainly relevant against this Torkoal if the Torkoal now becomes the focal point to, to try and deal the damage. And the Weezing taking the field maybe giving us an indication of uh, what's left in the back. Uh, of course, the, the Weezing, not the most important uh, kind of situation here, and, and I'll be curious to see if it can put in a shift damage-wise. Uh, but that turn, not good for David and fantastic for Wolf. Yeah, wow. I, I mean, just the, the fact the sun was set up for the Flare Blitz, and then you had the burn on top of that. It was just going to secure the knockout onto that Venusaur. But because of the yawn that came through on Torkoal earlier to the Dragapult, Dragapult will be leaving the field so that it doesn't get put to sleep, and it will be Colossal coming out in its place. Uh, this time around, too, uh, Weezing getting a chance to show us what it's made of and going for the taunt there. Wolf smartly recognizing that that might be the case and just trying to get some damage off onto that Weezing. 
anything, but that means that Torkoal will be able to go for the Yawn, and it goes right into that Dragapult slot. Incineroar, interestingly enough, is just going after it with the sun up. The Torkoal's actually really helped this Incineroar out and said, you know what, your Flare Blitzes now do more damage because the sun's up. So uh, Wolf reading into that really, really well. Uh, obviously, knowing there's the potential of Torn or something on the uh, Incineroar, uh, but at this point, all it needs to do is deal damage. And even though the Torkoal on David's side is just consistently yawning, consistently putting things uh, in that position that they might go to sleep. I mean, nice room to read that the, the Dragapult would switch out. He doesn't have anything alongside it that can really apply the pressure and, and punish all of these switches. Uh, David's forced to show us his, his last Pokemon. Um, obviously, this means we get a round of uh, abilities in the middle of the turn. And it's Regigigas not alongside the Weezing. Yeah, that means that that slow start is going to be active. That ability of Regigigas as a Colossal now leaving the field because of the yawn from Torkoal. Dragapult now coming back out onto the field as Torkoal just goes for a protect here. But let's see exactly how the rest of this turn plays out as the Flare Blitz again just targeting down that Weezing slot and bringing that Regigigas <laughs> so low. This Flare Blitz in the sun that the Torkoal set up is just two-shotting, uh, and in some cases one-shotting with the help of the burn. Everything on David's team. Uh, he's definitely going to have to be careful uh, looking towards uh, any future games, making sure that, you know, uh, I don't allow this. But Wolf has, you know, sat here. He's been swapping out that Pokemon on the left, just back and forth, uh, making sure it doesn't get yawned, doesn't get put to sleep, and just letting the Incineroar do all of the work with these Flare Blitzes. Yeah, well, Weezing now gets a chance to be next to its partner, Regigigas, which is going to allow that ability to not be active on the field this time, as David is kind of put into this position where he has to do something and fast to be able to make up for the deficit that Wolf has created during this game. And one of the ways David can get back into this is Dynamaxing. With that Regigigas on the field and that slow start not being active, that means that Regigigas can get going in this match and be able to potentially do something but will Obis comes through reggie gigas avoids it oh a nice a nice use of the max hailstorm getting that dragapult um you know the reggie gigas is now the focal point of this team it has to carry all of the weight david has thrown everything into this reggie gigas team and, and is just saying you know what i'm gonna have to deal with pretty much everything between torkoal where there's a light screen up and of course wheezing which isn't exactly an offensive threat. The Regigigas has to probably take at least three of the knockouts here, and uh, it's going to be a, a tough old task, even with the pairing and Weezing's neutralizing gas. It can only now, because it's Dynamax, target one Pokemon at a time, and, and that means, um, you know, Wolf still has a little bit of wiggle room to, to play around it. Yeah, and still having that potent combination of the Urshifu and the Colossal in the back as an option for the end game. We've seen this a couple of times from Wolf, just really preserving both of those Pokemon, uh, especially also having the double option of setting up that Colossal with either the Dragapult or the Urshifu in this situation. So you still have the Urshifu left. I think that's a great place to, to be if you are Wolf, but Regigigas now going for the max strike here into the Urshifu that just switched in and bringing it right down to its Focus Sash. This Colossal might not get a chance to get set up this game. No, but the Urshifu uh, doesn't really mind that. I mean, it's uh, it's on the field. It's staying there until at least the end of the turn. Uh, it doesn't need to do all that much. Uh, Weezing though, following up, just saying no. Um, you know, making sure it gets knocked out with a follow-up sludge bomb. Uh, so yeah, Urshifu is definitely removed from play here, but Incineroar uh, is just continuing to do its thing, uh, making sure the Weezing is removed from play now. So this Regigigas uh, is going to struggle a little bit as the, uh, the neutralizing gas uh, goes away and Intimidate lands and slow starts back in play. Yeah, you could look at that turn and go, you know, why did Wolf not target down this Regigigas? Well, it's gonna be taking residual damage from the fact that it does have the hail up um, and you're also carrying a life orb. So you're getting residual damage in a couple of different ways. Plus knocking out that wheezing means that the neutralizing gas wears off and that intimidate is so important. Yeah, the intimidate going down is, is huge and the Torkoal here, uh, certainly not looking, uh, it's got the drought as well, um, which, you know, the sunlight coming back up means it might be able to fire back. The light screen did end as well um, from that very first turn where Dragapult set it up. But the two Pokemon it's looking at on the field right now uh, aren't exactly premium premium targets for something like this. 
uh, Torkoal. You know, you want to be able to hit something super effectively, and even if you start landing eruptions, I don't think either of these Pokémon are too concerned about that. So this Regigigas uh, really on a timer uh, the last turn, of course, and something to note, Wolf still has access to Dynamax. He hadn't used it yeah. up until this point, so uh, it's been, a, uh, you know, a, an interesting game for the Colossal. It's not actually set up uh, the way it would usually be with the Steam Engine and the Weakness Policy, but it's still at full health. It's still in a pretty safe position and now could just wrap up this game. Uh, it's going to wait a little bit before it does that, though, uh, making sure it doesn't get caught with uh, anything completely untoward. Well, the other thing, too, is just kind of maybe stalling out this last turn of Dynamax here from David, where you do have that Max Quake going into the Incineroar. Now, will he be able to secure the knockout? So this Colossal is going to be the last Pokemon that Wolf has in order to try to wrap up this game. Regigigas, though, should be knocked out here by the Hail, but the, yeah, and Torkoal tries to go for the Yawn, but that Max Guard's going to block it. But Max Guard, very, very smart, seeing a really good endgame win condition, knowing how low that Regigigas was, uh, does mean uh, Wolf is, is certainly uh, in a, a solid position. I mean, the Regigigas can't attack uh, without knocking itself out, so all he really needs to do is, is go after this Torkoal right now. Uh, and once that Torkoal is removed from play, I mean, this, this Colossal's still got two more turns of, of Dynamax to go, and, and that's going to be, uh, you know, really the, the turns that Wolf just needs to wrap this up, and of course, reset the grand finals for us, pushing us on uh, to, you know, the best of three. Uh, but he's in really in the driving seat to, to do that now, as I don't see many ways for David to, to try and fight back. Giga Impact, Ooh. yeah, that, that's not going to be enough. <laughs> No, in fact, Regigigas gets knocked out for its troubles there by the Life Orb recoil as Colossal goes for that G-Max Volcalith right into the Torkoal that doesn't decide to protect this turn. Uh, it's not enough, but now you have the residual damage coming in from G-Max Volcalith. So, oh, but Barry. Yeah, I mean, you can't just rely on the G-Max Volcalith to do it, but you do have one more turn of of Dynamax to get there as well. And, and yes, Torkoal is going to try and slow things down with a, a good old yawn. So at the end of the next turn, uh, Colossal is going to be in trouble. But uh, if it's asleep and Torkoal can't do enough damage to it, then yeah, the, the G-Max Vocalith is going to get there in a couple more turns. Uh, of course, a pro uh, even a protective from this Torkoal isn't going to block all of the damage from the mm -hmm. max move. And that just puts the, the end of this game even closer. I'll be curious to see if it gets the knockout through or if it needs the help of the residual damage. We're about to find out. No, I think the residual damage is going to be necessary in order to knock out this Torkoal. Uh, is it going to be enough, though? Yeah, there it is. Wolf Glick yep. takes this first set of the Grand Finals and brings us into a bracket reset. Okay, so this means that the bracket is completely reset. They're both now technically in losers, and this does 